you could model that picture. And in first place, for the Titan C3 Mall, Chris Flanagan. Team Division. Fourth place, Little Joe 2, Thunderbirds. TCMP to B or not to B. <laughs> that model is some serious gymnastics and injection. <laughs> <laughs> but it's so cool. <laughs> Second place. All three motors firing, and it has to be 1500 G-Force. And if you like that model, they're going to make it available. <laughs> yes, sir. Company in the making. They'll also offer a laser cut step -up. First place. With an amazing model, John Rom, flying I beam kids in the Super Chief 2.
Two, three, one, anybody? Yeah. All right. Yeah. He's just too shy to accept. <laughs> Again, from North Coast, a handy stand, 156. 156. Rob, wake up, Rob. 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 156? <laughs> I'm like, give it up. <laughs> Completely give it up. Okay, so in the in the NAR we have a, a number of special awards we give out each year. Um, well, there are the surprises go. Well, anyway, let me first explain that David Gregory, uh, this is an award that is presented to an A Division contestant for great craftsmanship in a non-craftsmanship event, meaning it's not scale, plastic model, etc. And it's a random event. That is, the contest director gets to select the, the event, and this year I selected Sea Rocket Glider. I have an idea why it's so strong. David Gregor was the son of a longtime NER member, Dr. Jerry Gregor, who started the Caesar section in Ohio at a time when uh, he was he was seeking a, a, something of an interest for David that didn't require the physical activity of a track team that David was currently participating in when he was diagnosed with leukemia in 1966. David Gregor was working on his Naram 11 models in 1969 in his hospital room when that leukemia claimed his life in May of that year. David was Jerry Gregor's only son. So Jerry started this award to recognize A Divisioners. Brian, it's my pleasure to give to you this year the Naram 57 Gregor Award. that I found particularly interesting about his C Division, his C Rocket Glider, was that he had gone on the internet and done some research into interesting symbolism. And he had found the Japanese kanji for the word destiny, which he placed that kanji on the wing of his glider. And um, I thought that was pretty cool. Plus, I also took note of all the models he built during the course of the week. And I thought when I saw him out flying sports scale today that a lot of young people might play it safe, you know, an IQS by Tomahawk, you know, something single, motor, simple. He flew a two-stage model, and it worked. <laughs> I thought that was also pretty uh, cool. So, Brian, keep it up. Can we get a picture of him? Oh, well, let's see. We got did you, a, did you already get one, Chris? Okay. All right. So where do we go from there? Ah, that's where we go from there. We go from serious to the semi-serious. Chad, I turn the floor over to you, literally. Okay. You are welcome. Address your minions. <laughs> oh boy, I'm stepping away. <laughs> Hi everyone. Just far away. All right, um, quick divergence here. This is going somewhere, trust me. Um, I think most of you know me and probably find that unfortunate, but you still do. Um, this is my 26th narrow, and um, I kind of have to thank. A lot of people, everybody over the years, but uh, getting started, as most of you know, me and Ryan Wickenberg were kids in Southern Indiana. We had no clue, absolutely none of what we were doing. And got, got joined in R, started flying rockets, got in competition. And Lila and Dave Wickenberg took us to meet. We've been driving. Boy, did they not know what they were getting themselves into. Uh, but beyond that, um, 
the biggest thing that helped me to get started in Mark, I'm probably going to hold this against you once I get to it here. Uh, there's a couple people that were definitely instrumental in that. And the one I want to recognize, the two I want to recognize, the first one is Matt Steele uh, for North Coast Rocketry. I bought a lot of kits. My mom paid for it. I was here. I was here at 15. I had a job. So uh, I appreciate that. He got me going. I uh, learned a lot from this, the kits. You know, a lot of those were George Gasway design kits as well. So I appreciate what George has done. But the one that did a lot for me after buying parts from him was at the core, the original Apogee. And I spent a lot of money on phone calls. If you know Ed, Ed talks forever. <laughs> I would call to ask a few questions. An hour and a half later, we'd be done with a phone call. And for those of you who've been to our meets, uh, my great uncle Kenneth Park, who owned the farm we fly at, I'd go, Chad, you're on the phone a long time. This is a lot of money for a phone call. Yeah, but I'm learning stuff. I really am. And so um, I just want to thank that guy there for a lot. You can blame him that I'm here doing this. He told Tom, he's like, no, that wouldn't be real. So thank you, Ed. Thank you very much for what you did. Give me a I will. You really paid forward. Thank you. Now on to the illustrious award that everyone wants to win and no one wants to take home. <laughs> you guys are getting better because my list is short and the contest range really didn't have a lot of thrashing and crashing. But really? we did have some. Not to disappoint. <laughs> we'll start out with the ever popular, you know I'm going to bring this up, the Romana. <laughs> it was great! It housed us, it let us print models, and it didn't screw anything up this year. That's the first time in history. <laughs> so thank you for the Ramada. Um, the other one was way before Naram, and you know, if you're going to do something right, do it right, and that was the Antares Kato. Yeah, it pretty much did. That one <laughs> overshadowed anything we could do. Unfortunately, it happened, but it happened. So moving on to what happened here, um, Let's go with the uh, altimeters, the micro peaks. They're nice and small and great. They're very sensitive to sunlight, so fly them at night. You'll get a right reading that way. <laughs> My cousin Lila tried to fly helicopter on Wednesday. The matter worked so well it lit her helicopter while was on fire. <laughs> yeah. I burned rotors off coming down, but never on the pad, so nice job on that. Um, Another talented flight was John Buckley's EA. He had a peanut on board. Good flight. Unfortunately, the peanut fell out. <laughs> he brought the model back to check in. It was fine, but no altimeter, so it was a track loss for a little bit until so somebody actually found an altimeter in the desert. I don't know who did that, but you have good hearing to find a little tiny piece of electronics in the desert. John won the event because somebody found his altimeter playing in the desert. He didn't have to crash anything, but to go through all of that and win an event, you deserve some recognition. Well, what was the payload they made out of? Oh, yeah, he's blocking out. That's why I crashed. All right. <laughs> it's like, I didn't do that. Oh, wait, I sold that for a while, too, didn't I? So, um... This happened at Naram, wasn't really rock related, but we always gotta throw stuff in like this. Jack Haggerty, he made it here, but his fuel pump really tipped. <laughs> and Jack, I think he knew this, but um, trying to find a fuel pump for a 74 Alfa Romeo in the middle of Tucson. <laughs> mm, good luck with that. Yeah. Hey John, the eight C's are beautiful, buy one. <laughs> um, Let's see. Vern uh, Richardson's EA. It was staged and it kind of staged. Well, not really. It almost hit raw. So anytime you get it almost hit raw, so you're on the drum book. <laughs> so, um, a couple that weren't actual flying rockets. Uh, took a lot of talent on this one. John Muscalia. He did a good job. John Muscalia and Gary and Fran Miller. Warm their tent down for the day and strapped it down in the sport range. The road boards would blow away. Then they jump in their vehicle. John's driving. 
John goes forward and drives over the tent. <laughs> the tent is now this bigger beam looking like this with track marks on the canopy. They bought a new tent the next day. John bought. John bought a new tent. Well, if you're done with driving over the tent, I'm sorry. <laughs> I love you, man. Come on. Um, I had to nominate this just because it's Captain Obvious. A sign, if anybody saw it at the gate when you come into the field, said, this gate is kept closed at all times. In Southern Indiana, we call that a fence. <laughs> all right. You can't open it, it's a fence. So he gets a nomination. Um, G-forces be out two mile after they borrowed an altimeter from me. They did an A-10 breach and A-3 force at a delay stage. It went up, unstable, spun around, and I'm out there kind of hanging with them. And it's pointed at me, and I'm going into three second delay. Is this actually on the stage? Oh, I hope not, because it's still pointed at me. <laughs> but it is stage. So you got lucky. You would have wanted to hit me, obviously. <laughs> you missed that because you couldn't light the second one. So. Um, today we had uh, Craig Kaskisi, his bulldog, did a loop and almost hit the judge. Jack Hacker had a little dance there. And he hit the judge, another automatic combination. Twice. Yeah, tw okay, yeah, twice, yeah, twice, twice. Um, sports Goal, actually I was kind of disappointed in Sports Goal today. Uh, I didn't look at all the results, I asked Chris, and he thought the same thing. Uh, there were some DQ flights, but I don't think anyone disqualified out of sports scale. And I don't know the last time that's happened in there. I mean, to not have some major model, especially with the composite clusters and staging we had, not to DQ, yeah, impressive. So you guys kind of slacking back, and that's where I was looking for some nominations today. Nobody really did much. Well, the Stenbergs. I mean, there's four Stenberg flights. Either you get the runway or the same tree. <laughs> take your mesquite tree home and it'll make me some time. So here we go to the final three. All right, those just got talked about. Third place. This one was good. But it's kind of one of those that's happened a bunch. It's Jim Phillips A flight. I think it was the second one. Separated, a captain came in, hit the roof of the Armada, and put a dent in it. Nice job. But it's an A-capsule free falling, falling, causing damage. And it's happened a lot. So, kind of had to put you in third. Then we get to the top two. They're close. But after today, second place was relegated. And it's James Duffy. Now, a lot of you weren't out there for this flight, but it was entertaining. It's on Facebook. He flew uh, his uh, scale altitude FAI flight on Sunday, which was his S5 bird. He's out there prepping, and I guess he taped his motor in, puts his Mylar tape on the top of the tower. He's finishing prepping, finishing prepping. All right, I'm ready to go. And they launch. And if you guys, uh, scale altitude S5 is not sports scale. It's made for calipers. And I don't need a caliper to measure the inside circumference of a roll of tape. It's about four inches. Uh, Span on James Duffy's fins, greater than four inches. <laughs> As it went up and went through said roll of tape, it removed all four fins from Duffy's model. The tape goes in there, model has no fins, model crashes around, hits top of range tent, skims off, and keeps going. That's pretty impressive. <laughs> and if he would have won, I would have called Andy Jackson and said, here, put on my tab, send him a new roll of model tape. <laughs> but today, Somebody came out, did a scale flight, second to last flight, almost the whole day. And there was little Joe too flying on a seven motor cluster. Six B6Os and an F39 composite, but we mix clusters that are fun all the time to watch get lit. All B6s split and it lifts off and starts to go broad. And clips drag said F39 reload out of the model. <laughs> oh, now the fun begins. <laughs> As F39 is building the pressure, F39 completely lights, heads south. <laughs> Misses said RSO, otherwise known as Trip Barber. Zoom past his head, over the tent, over the runway. We're not sure if it went through the Ramada or over the Ramada, but it creamed past the parking lot and kept going. Now, while everybody's hearing this, watching this, his model crashed into the ground, too. So, I mean, he kind of had the double thing going on, so 
Yeah, gotta give it to you, Mr. Dunbar. You won this year. Now you got all that. Did you see the kids pull their thing out? And after working for Hobby Store for a number of years, everybody wants instant gratification. Everyone wants ready to run, ready to fly. We're not doing that anymore at Best Midwest. Build your own. <laughs> And uh, in honor of the hotel, here's your cookie. Thank you. I'm very sorry. I did not mean that at all. Thank you. 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 Thank So each year, uh, sections, well, Tom's going to give you the lowdown on it, but we're going to do the lack of letter awards, so you give him the play-by-play -play on this. I won't explain it. You do it better. Tom Beach. This year, we had six newsletters entered. Uh, we have three judges, Ed Chess, Tom Lyon, and me. And this year, there were three newsletters that were close enough together that each of the three judges initially picked a different one as first place. But they all can't win first place. Only one can win first place. So we have, we have like a Dog 43, we have Team Pittsburgh, and we have the Launch Rack. All right? Two of them are honorable mention, but uh, one of them gets the trophy and the box of secret stuff that everybody gets to add to. And the one that gets the trophy is Team Pittsburgh. Seven. I got 147. It. You got it? I'm one off. 
Out of order. Anyways, so, uh, for those of you that may not know me, I'm John Hockheimer, the Vice President of the National Association of Rocketry. Uh, Ted Cochran couldn't be here um, because a, a family um, event that he had to attend, so I'm, I'm representing Ted. We have, um, well, first of all, just a quick phrase of hand. Who here was this their first NAR? Or first NAR? Wow, we, yes. That's your first one. Um, who here has been to more than 20 NARS? All right. Awesome. And who here had fun this week? Always. Right. Get clapping. Your hands are all up. So, um, in terms of the President's Awards, we um, did give one President's Award this spring to Mary Blakey, the past chairman of the AIA. She um, was instrumental in shepherding TARC and keeping TARC rolling, um, and we um, gave her the award at TARC. It was, um, I think, quite the surprise for her, and, and it was very well deserved. For, um, the, the next award, where, um, the board decided to do um, a Galloway Award this year. Um, we don't have it yet to display, but uh, we will get pictures and, and everything. But the, the Galloway Award this year is going to go to Fred Schechter. Uh, Fred was very instrumental. Um, from what I understand, it was it seemed like a lifelong endeavor for him, but at least the last 10, 15 years he's been working diligently to get the California laws changed to allow model rocketry to expand the definition in California. So previously, I think it was somewhere around 350 grams was considered a model rocket, and therefore a lot of students were very limited in what they could fly. Put a damper on the, the TAR teams. Um, through his work and um, through some good um, negotiations in the California legislation, it's now up to 1,500 grams for a model rocket, so it's essentially um, pretty much the same across the country. We'll probably see this blossoming of TARC teams now, um, very competitive in California. So um, stay tuned. We'll um, get that award to Fred and, and share it with you all. And that's all I have for now. <laughs> Why well, do a couple of door prizes beforehand? Do we want to do any door prizes first? Sure. Yeah. All right. Ooh, that was overwhelming, but okay. <laughs> okay. We have a threesome of educational books. I just want to make sure you did them. Okay, we have a threesome, optimum altitude, camera payloads, and level one certification. And aerospace specialty products, 20% discount, going to 166. 166. And another one. Gonna go to 159. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what. Did, did you want them, or I'll tell you what we'll do. Just switch the prize. We'll swap it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, much, Steve. Oh, she's, she's got, got a bill for the bills. Ooh, right. that's right. Okay. So, figures. Let's go to 278. Two seven eight. And another. Let's go to two oh eight. Let's go at 15% ask discount and Nexus, and we're going to send that to 163. Okay. 
And let's go ahead and something different here. We have here from Fliss Kids. He's coming out with a brand new kit called the Spad. And this coupon here is good for one signed early production Spad. A free kit and free shipping from Fliss. Plus we've got a 10% discount uh, for ASP here. And that's gonna go to 171. 171. Okay, so this is going to all be a big reveal, right? I guess. We don't have the stage. No. This is a big reveal. Oh, right, so. Oh, wait, there's a back up. Can you watch the projector and move the laptop over there? Yeah, do that. Let's do what? Unplug the projector and bring that, bring that thing you call a laptop <laughs> so I can read it on the screen. Oh. We've sort of lacked for a little drama space. There we go. Don't take it too long. Don't take it off the steam power, man. Okay. So you, have to do, uh, you do have to wind the crank about every 10 minutes. Is that, is that what this handle is? That what it is? Like skin yeah, is? Wind, wind the crank. So I just hit the lower right hand button? Yep. Like that? Yeah. And don't forget, don't forget to hit the choke. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. Hold on. Make sure it started. Yeah. Spray speed. Spray All right. Uh, this will play on there. Oh, well, it will. Not. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We'll get a little drama into this. Now. So, Naren 57, 